Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none in on my day. I walk on, but I want y'all to definitely tap in. Check out our all our social media platform. I mean, all of them. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. You name it, we're on it. But check out our Patreon channel because that's where we have our full length interviews as well as our YouTube membership. Y'all say y'all love Boss Talk One Hundred and One and you want to support us? Go ahead and sign up for our membership package. Thank you, man. Make sure you like and share and subscribe and all the stuff Miss Jamaica just told you. Uh, yeah, make sure you listen to. It. I've been listening for twenty years. It ain't really stirred me wrong yet. That I'm gonna tell y'all about. Repeat again what you just said. Check it, man. It's Boss Talk 101, <laughs> man. We're in the building, man. We got a very special guest today. This guy here needs no introduction. This guy's from Louisiana, man. Mm. But this guy really, he, he, this guy different. Um, I really, really, really am intrigued by this whole movement. Uh, D1 is in the building. One of the coldest ones I've seen to do it when it comes to lyricism, man. Yes, sir. It's thank going you. down. Thank you, baby. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that for real. Man, thank you for coming on the show. Man, this uh, boss yeah, talk. I ain't, I ain't know if this was gonna happen. I I I, I looked the first time we ever interacted on Instagram. Man, you had me feeling like, you know, I ain't even going to tell them what you DM me. But I ain't even going to put you out there like that, bro. Well, I think I, I think the, the shock value has, does something. So you wouldn't be the first one to hear something like that from me. Uh, it's been things where people were texting me. Uh, big known people, I'll be like, don't text me. I don't do all that texting. Call me on the phone. I'm from the old school. For real. Uh, yeah, certain people call and be like, what's wrong with it? Wow. You'll be amazed if I told all you right. these people. I'm all just right. like that. So that's just I you. Just, I just right. love to bring it. I love to be me. I don't like to be nobody else. I can't be nobody else. Yeah, be real. bro. Yeah, you're, you're, when you DM me, bro, and I finally <laughs> read it, you know, months later, because I don't be checking on my DMs, it threw me all the way off. I said, man, this man coming at me, man, like, like, like I was a no call, no show, like I missed my opportunity. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, that's how it's I do like it. like a job. Man. No call, no show. I told you about it, didn't I? See, I got it. I, yeah. I, I, done, I done undone him. I'm yeah. done with this guy. Yeah. But I knew I had love for you. That, mm -hmm. That's why I was frustrated. I'm like, let this supposed to be done happen. Dang. So that was way before any interview. But how long before any, you know, did you reach out to him? How long before that? I just reached out because I seen him. I was up one night and, and I was looking through my my phone and was it like a month before you actually uh, sent that last message maybe about two three months it was about, it? yeah about three okay. yeah and I just basically liked his style and his positivity and who he was and then you know New Orleans man I'm a New Orleans type of dude like yeah I, I can tell you you really rock with my city bro yeah, I, I can tell I, I listen to uh, and I watch some of your episodes man I mean from Sharani I interviewed Sharani at Peaches Peaches and, and different stuff that I, I went down there and KL, me and KLC actually supposed to still mm -hmm. be walking through the sit through his whole you know where footage. he used to be at just to yep. do a look like a little small skit of a documentary for DJ me and him Bootsy. Yo, DJ, yeah he and he and Baton Rouge Baton though that's different yeah. you know what I'm saying so yeah. Boosie uh, I mean everybody you just named I got stories with all of them Boosie uh, I used to be his intern bro really at, at the radio station I went to LSU yeah, yeah. in wow. Baton Rouge yeah, I seen that wow. and I used to be his intern him and DJ Super Mike Wow. Shout, shout out to shout out to my man DJ Super Mike and DJ Boosie. Uh, and when I became a teacher, when I first graduated college, they came and spoke to my classes. Really? Wow. Yeah. So we we was like that, man. I was the intern, so they seen me go from an uh, intern to you know to that that dude. You know what I mean? They, <laughs> yeah, they, I love they seen it. The, yeah, they seen the whole. Tell coming. me about something that DJ Bootsy imparted on you that stuck with you even up to today. Bootsy. Well, one thing with Bootsy was he never made me feel like an intern. You know, so he, he was the epitome of treat everybody the same, whether they're your boss or whether they're the, the college intern or whether it's the janitor at the station. So uh, I saw that from him. And also, Boosie ain't from Baton Rouge. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but you couldn't you couldn't tell because he was so authentic that everybody just loved him and accepted him. You know, we kind of like a finicky, picky state. Mm. You know what I mean? Like New Orleans, Baton Rouge, we be quick to be like, so what high school you went to? You know what <laughs> I mean? Like who your people is, where they stay at? Everybody know everybody. Yeah, and if you don't really come from that that, that, that cloth, we kind of like, eh. But DJ Boosie and DJ Super Mike, both of them, they, they not from Louisiana at all. But mm -hmm. man, that authenticity opened doors that talent can't open. And mm -hmm. I learned that. So I was like, ooh, in this rap game, I want to be authentic. 
more than I want to be real, more than I want to be relatable, more than I want to be hot or lit. I just want to be authentic. That's right. going to get me further. So I like to go into the background. What part of New Orleans are you from? I'm from the East. The East. To be specific, I'm from the Goose. That's the name of my hood. In Never the East. heard of that one. Oh yeah, the I mean, ghost. just look on CNN. Is type that uptown, in, downtown? Nah, that's downtown. That's that's part of the night ward. Oh, okay, that's part of the night. Yeah, the East. But is I never part heard of the him say the ghost. ghost. The, not the ghost. Oh, the goose. Like the goose. Duck, duck, goose. Okay, okay. You hear okay, me? Okay. Yeah, the goose. So the goose. New Orleans know about the goose and the okay. checkerboard and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, unfortunately, it's bad out there. It's real bad. You know, it's like a war zone now. It wasn't even good when I was coming up, but now... It's worse. Yeah, unfortunately. And the area is bad, but I still... I would never call the people bad. You mm -hmm. know, I just can't... Circumstances. I, I, yeah, I can't find it in my heart to call the people bad. You know, I got a funny story about uh about my hood. So I grew up playing uh, baseball and basketball at Digby Park, right? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a playground in my hood. And the other year, a couple of years ago, um, I have a... I have a situation like a partnership with Puma. So Puma was like, look, um, D, we love the work you're doing with us. We want to uh, do something with you in your hometown. What you got in mind? I said, oh, man, we got to go back to my hood in the east. We got to go to the Goose. Matter of fact, we got to go to Digby Playground, and we're going to just give away a bunch of kicks for Christmas, right? So Christmas time come. I announced it. I put the word out there on social media. Hey, I'm going to be at Digby on this day, like December 21st. Everybody come out. We're How just going to have a thousand pair of up? shoes, right? You had 1,300 people who all came and conversed. Now, watch this. My heart be in the right place, but sometimes my heart moved quicker than my brain. You went and bought three more, 300 more pairs of shoes, didn't you? Nope. I, I definitely <laughs> didn't do that. Look, I did, look, my heart wasn't in that place, you know I mean? But this is what happened. This is literally one of the one of the most um, dangerous, violent parts of New Orleans, right? Mm -hmm. We gave away a thousand pair of shoes, and I was just so excited, and I knew that I'm coming with love. So because I'm leading with love, oh, this is gonna be an amazing giveaway. Da 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 da. It didn't hit me till that day when people came up to me. They were like, "So when, like, when is the police detail coming? Like, when are the security guards wow. coming?" Da da da. And I was like, "Wait, what? For we, what? We need security." Like, what you mean? And they were like, bro, do you know where we at? We finna give away a thousand pair of shoes to people that's, that's hurting right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you just gotta have that. Somebody I, think you might get robbed or something like everybody that. Everybody was thinking that. And I was like, y'all, I'm telling y'all, man, we good. It was like, it's Christmas time, people hurting, people ready for, and then you giving away something for free. Like, what's up? Like, you gotta have security out here. We ain't have not one police officer, but we ain't have not one incident. Mm, you hear me? That's amazing. Everybody, er, yeah, everybody came outdoors. It was like 30 degrees outside. Everybody got their kicks, love. We had food trucks. We had all that. Yeah, man, like when you lead with love, that's why I say it's never the people that's bad. You know, it's the circumstances and it's mm -hmm. decisions, bad decisions that people Choices. make. Mm -hmm. But it's a difference between bad decisions and bad people. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, you you basically you come from a place where I interviewed from Mr. Servon to all these guys, man, Silk the Shocker, you know, I, mm -hmm. I mean, and just looking at how it was down there coming up, uh, you had your mother and father in the home. And I think that's big, you know, when I start to look at the situation. But it ain't just everything, because you have a lot of people that make it regardless, you know what I'm saying? But for you to have that, and then they still together now, right? Still together. They've been married for over 40 years. Awesome. That's big, man. That's man. huge when you come from that. Just explain to me, uh, coming up as a, as a kid in New Orleans, how was it for you? How was it? So, I didn't realize that we lived in a war zone because inside the walls of that house we had, we had a little small townhouse, you know what I'm saying? Like not anything big or lavish at all, but it was so filled with love and structure that I didn't realize that outside of this house, man, it's a trap house across the street, one house to the right. It's, you know, police tape because people getting murked and people getting shot all in the neighborhood. like. This is considered a place where, you know, people with money definitely don't live around here. Mm -hmm. I never realized any of that until I moved away and went to college. Because when I moved away, I was, you know, in a different environment. And now when I would come back home, I was like, ooh, it feel different when I come back home than what I'm used to up in college. You know what I'm saying? My daddy, blue collar worker, welder, you know what I'm saying? My mom, social worker, 
So they, I just saw them wake up every day, make an honest living, go to work. My pops worked an hour away from our crib, so he had to wake up at four in the morning and drive an hour each day just to get to work, welding in a hundred degree heat, New Orleans heat, you know what I'm saying, all day, every day. And by the time he get off of work, like 10 hours later, he coming back, he making it in time for my baseball practice, for my basketball games, you know. Still doing this stuff. My pops used to be the dude who wanted to tape everything, video everything. So this wasn't in the era of smartphones and all that. So my daddy had like a big news yeah. camera. You mm-hmm. hear me? And he that he's sitting in the stands. Cassette players. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. sitting. He's sitting in the stands, and he uh he capturing all the memories for me. So now when I look back at all my high school games, I'm like, dang, I got this on tapes because mm-hmm. my daddy after working 10, 12 hours, you know. Dirty dicky outfit on from welding all day, making it in time because he prioritized that. Like, I just seen that's what was normal to me. So that's how I was coming up. It was like a combination of that. And also, my life turned out different than a lot of my peers because um, the school system in New Orleans is not the best. It's set up to where you're supposed to go to your district school. Of course. And if you don't have a lot of money, if you live in a poverty-stricken area, your district school is trash a lot mm-hmm. of times. Mm-hmm. The district schools that I was supposed to go to, they were they were not they were not conducive for raising young black men and women in a in a loving place that also was academically rigorous. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It was just it was dysfunction, and it was like get it how you live. You know, we're gonna have a couple shining stars that's gonna emerge from here, but for the most part, the bar is set really low. That's that was all my schools, right? But I never went to those schools because my daddy, when I was in kindergarten, they had a school all the way across town by Tulane University and Loyola University. It was called Audubon Montessori. They realized that like that right there, that type of education is free because it's still a public school. Mm-hmm. But it's also going to show David, that's me, that, you know, my name is David. It's going to show David a different side of life than what we can provide for him over here where we live at in the East. So right? they had to drive you to school every morning? Had to, first of all, he had to camp out in a tent overnight to have a chance to enter a lottery to get me into the school because mm. so many people want to go to the school. Right. So there was like the first 100 people have a chance to get into this school. My daddy camped out the night before in a tent on the sidewalk and he was number six in line. They had a line down the block. You heard me? like a line to get in heaven or something. It was like, yo, boo who people trying to get here. My daddy got there so early, got me a spot, I hit the lottery, you know what I mean? Hit wow. the lottery, got in that school. That school, that changed my life because I went there from kindergarten to eighth grade. And every day, although I'm living in one type of environment, I'm going to school with black students, white students, Asian students, Hispanic students, I gotta walk past million dollar houses, the type of houses that Drew Brees lives in, the mm-hmm. type of houses like an Anthony Davis will be living in when he was playing for the Pelicans. And I gotta pass all this up every day. It's on the same block as my school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This became normal to me to where it's like, oh, I'm not intimidated by white people. I'm not intimidated by other ethnicities thinking they're smarter than me. Y'all had more money than me back then, but I was in gifted classes, you know what I mean? So I'm seeing as a young kid, like that. Trying to analyze certain things. Yeah, like the whole the whole concept of idolizing uh, material, material possessions. Mm-hmm. Like, that was, that was dead to me by the time I was in middle school. I was like, man, yeah, your parents got money, so y'all live in this big fancy neighborhood, but when we getting them books, I'm doing better than you in school. You asking me for help. You trying to copy off my paper, you know what I mean? Like... It's life experiences that show me like, dang, I'm lacking in some areas, like maybe having the money or having the exposure to certain things in life, but I'm not lacking when it comes to like, God gave me something special and I gotta figure out what to do with this. And that something special was just always my brain and my and my ability to like lead with love wherever I go. I got a wow. question real quick, because I see the things that your dad sacrificed and did so that you could have a better, you know, education and life and so forth. Where did he get that drive to do that? How was he raised? What, cause you know how sometimes parents tend to, because they didn't have, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that my son, my children have a better life than what I did. Um, or maybe he saw his mom or dad did the same for him, so he's doing the same for you. I'm just trying to figure of out where course, that, of which course. way did it go? Yeah, you know, um, in the black community, we often talk about uh, trying to break generational curses. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Uh, I was blessed that at least two or three generations before me in the black community, we just had we had generational 
love and we had uh, you know generational structure because where did my daddy get it from? He got it from his mama and his daddy. That's my grandparents. They were married for 66 years. Oh, so they, yeah. they had that same structure? Same that, structure. Okay. My grandpa's still living, you know, mm -hmm. 93 years old. My grandma just passed away a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful relationship. Like, when so you grow up, when you grow up around that, that get passed down. Right. So, so that's important. Um, I got it. That's important. But also, you got a lot of people who... Like, I'm a fan of hip-hop before I'm an artist, you know what I mean? I grew up listening to rap my whole life. My daddy listened to jazz music, so, you know, Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, um, Cannonball Adderley, uh, you know, all, all, all them brothers, uh, Nat Adderley, all, all that. But me, straight rap, straight my whole rap. life, straight rap. With that being said, I know these people's stories. I know about Pusha T saying, yeah, I grew up in a two-parent household as well. I know about Jada Kiss being like, yeah, I grew up in a two-parent household as well. Just because you grew up with that structure don't mean, what's Pusha T's favorite thing to rap about? Selling cocaine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not a guarantee that just because you grew up with that structure that you're not going to stray and depart from that. Jada Kiss, I saw his daddy do an interview. His daddy was like, yeah, we had him in private school. You know what I mean? So when I was hearing what he was rapping about, I was like, where you saw all that at? We had you in private school. So sometimes people get in the rap game and they 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 hallucinate. Not even just rap game, it's just life in period because that's one thing I've always asked a lot of people who sit right there is like, because of how you were raised or the environment you're in, does that mean that your outcome have to be like everybody else's? Mm. But you do have some who come out and be doctors, lawyers, and don't bump their heads, but you have a lot who do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, being a parent, you'd be like, what is the right way of how to raise your child so they don't end up like that? Yeah, well, in New Orleans, uh, a lot of times bumping your head is equivalent to losing your life. We don't get a lot of little innocent light head bumps in New Orleans. So, like, my best friend who grew up the same way as me, we went to the same school. We was like twins. You know, he got murdered because he started to stray from the path a little bit, and he started to live a different life than how we were raised and brought up. And great dude, I mean, you looking at me, you looking at him, you know, he's that type of dude, but he made some different decisions in life. And like I said, in our city, um, what, what other people might call bumping your head, you know, we call getting your head knocked off, you know, and unfortunately he didn't, li he didn't, he didn't live to, to shake back shake from back. some mistakes, yeah, mm -hmm. so, and I don't think that's just New Orleans. When I say that now, you know, I was a teacher. Um, I taught in Baton Rouge. It's wild out there in Baton Rouge. Oh, I, I think it's, I think it's worse in some parts of Baton Rouge than mm -hmm. New Orleans. Cause Baton Rouge was always like the little brother to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So when you the little brother, you know what you get? You get a chip on your shoulder. To where you like, man, I'm tired of getting picked on. I'm the little brother, everybody's sleeping on me. I'm about to go above and beyond to make sure I get noticed. And Baton Rouge, they had that chip on their shoulder for a long time. Let me ask you, when you was young, who, you say you, you love rap music, what was the, who was the artist that you loved? Was it P and Nim, or was it, who, what was the thing that you really listened to when you was coming up? That's a great question, bro. Uh, I love answering this. I was really, really, really into DMX. DMX? Oh, man, man, what? Yeah, I'll like DMX. When, when DMX, yeah, when DMX died, I shed real tears. He died the day before my birthday. Wow. Man, wow. I shed real tears, you know what I mean? Um, so I was really into DMX. I was really into Nas. How did, how did you, how did you, how did you learn about DMX? You just listening to the music, just hip hop head? Man, one of my middle school, <laughs> yeah, just listening to the music. That's how I found out about him. Of course, watching BET, MTV, but... DMX's presence was so big when he got onto the scene that one of my uh, math teachers in middle school, a white dude named Mr. Adams, this man came in class one day reciting DMX lyrics. Which song? Us. Uh, what they, they really want? From nah, the, the 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 intro. He was reciting the the lyrics to an intro skit where DMX said, "Just cause I love my." Yeah. Of course, he wasn't saying the N word. Yeah, you know I mean, he wasn't dumb, but, but he, he was like, it. "Ah, shit!" Oh, he replaced the N word with students. That's what he did. <laughs> he said, "Just cause I love my students, I share blood for my students. Let a student holler where my students. All I want to hear is right here, my students, <laughs> bro." That's when I was like, oh, DMX is, is on another level, bro, than a lot of these other rappers. He got a suburban white dude in class, you know, rapping this to his students. So DMX, Nas, 
Uh, juvenile. Juvenile. Oh, Lil Wayne. Oh, Lil Wayne was the youngest out of the clique, so it was easy coming up, you know, my generation, it was very easy to be like, yep, that's the one we like the most because he closest to our mm -hmm. age. He the you youngest one. He got the sound effects when he rapping. Chicka -pa, da -da 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 -da, you know what I mean? I felt that. So I really came up on them. Uh, uh, no Limit as well. I mean, No Limit No Limit had so many artists that it was like, I just rock with the brand, you know, because, man, it's hard to... It's hard to even attach to just one or two people. I mean, of course, I loved Mac. I loved uh, uh, C Murder. I loved uh, Fiend. These are the albums I bought. I bought Barcelona. I bought Shell Shocked. I bought uh, The Last Dine with the hologram cover. You know, I bought these albums. So the New Orleans stuff, No Limit Cash Money, yes. But DMX and Nas, big yes to them. Wow. So. Oh, that, oh I got to add one more in there. Who is that? Will Smith. Oh man! I used to rock the guy with Will. Who be slapping people. I used to, <laughs> I used to rock with Will Smith, bro. Um, I used to rock with him. Oh, you say used to after he slapped Chris Rock, you quit rocking with him? Man, I mean, no. As a rapper, I used to rock okay. with him. After, yeah, after he slapped Chris Rock, I kind I didn't respect that move. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I felt like that move was in an effort to impress his uh, his woman. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. And I ain't feel like that was. With a red Anytime jingle. it's two brothers, though, yeah, I don't really rock. I'm yeah, in, 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 front public, of, yeah, in, in public, in front of the world. Yeah, that's the not part. in front the barber shop. Yeah, in front of the, the world. world. You that, feel that's, me? That's 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 what made it kind of. If they'd have did it offset somewhere, I'd still be yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cause they two dudes. Bro. Yeah, but so I didn't respect that. But when he when he uh when he put out like getting jiggy with it and that song, just the two of us dedicated to his the son. son yeah. Oh, bro. Like I used to could listen to rap, but my parents they had one um they had one catch. I had to listen to clean rap, so it yeah. had to be the edited version. So when I bought 400 Degrees, it was the edited version. Really? When I bought The Black Is High from Sharani at Peaches, yeah. it was the edited version. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I when I would listen to these albums, it was always the curse words bleeped out. Will Smith never cursed in his music. So I was like, oh, I could get, like, the real version of his album, <laughs> not the edited version. And that's, what influ that's part of what influenced me, because I was like, man, this man went platinum with no curse words. Yeah. Okay, I didn't even want to be a rapper back then, but when I did start rapping, one thing I always remember was like, yo, I don't want cursing my music. And that's aside from my religion and me being Christian and all that. Even outside of that, I love the fact that you could be a dude that's like, dang, this dude different but dope at the same time, you know? And I just, I was up for that challenge, so. That's the crazy part, because I, I like I say, I, I, I just know that you, you know, you you listened to so you had to have some type of influence as a, as a youngster. How old was you when you when you really? I knew you. I, I heard you say you was in college when you when you started rapping. But mm -hmm. when when how old was you when you knew that you had a possibility? I, I want to rap. So I played basketball, mm -hmm. and I thought that was gonna be my ticket. You know, that was my first. Were level. you good? Yeah, I was. No, I was really good. I was like setting records at my school and everything. Yeah, I was, I, and I had the opportunity to play in college, but I wanted to play D1. You know, if you're familiar mm -hmm. with college mm -hmm. athletics, that's the dream right there. You're mm -hmm. trying to play at them big schools. I could have played D2 and D3. You know, I was on that type of level, but I tried to play D1, so I went to LSU, a D1 school, and I tried out for the team, tried to walk on, got cut, right? Whew. That hurt, didn't bruise it? my ego, you know, because I'm 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 used to being the man on campus. I'm averaging twenty a game in high school, you know, District Four A. Like people that's in the NBA right now, like DJ Augustine, people that's uh in the league right now and played and put up real numbers, real legends where I come from. Uh, Bo Lester McCaleb, you know, people like this. Uh, my man Milton, like I was balling with them. I was I was holding my own against them, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my man tweeted, Demond Carter, like I was holding my own with these people. So of course, when I got cut from my college team, that stuff didn't feel right. So that's when I get cut from the basketball team. Meanwhile, all my friends in college they all picked up a new hobby. Once we once we got to school, it's like everybody turned into a rapper. You know, everybody wanted to reinvent themselves and they all in the dorm room. They got their recording equipment and they having ciphers and they spitting and all this. So I was like, dang, everybody, all the black dudes in my school look like they into rapping. Let me try. You know, I, I just kind of got into it like that. Like, let me try. And you know when you go around the circle and everybody rapping, everybody went home the night before and wrote something and now y'all all spitting it for each other. 
And when y'all all spitting it, you could kind of tell, like, oh, he trash. Like, oh, he better not ever rap again after this, you know? <laughs> he straight. And then some people, you just like, mmm, he got that it factor. I had that it factor, and everybody knew it. You know, from the time I started rapping, I had the it factor. I just didn't have confidence at the time, you know? I had the it factor when it came to that pen, though, and those lyrics. So I um, I started rapping, yeah, in college, bro. And it was just a little hobby at first. But all in one year, my freshman year, I got cut from the basketball team. One of my best friends got murdered, like I was talking to y'all about. My girlfriend cheated on me with an LSU football player, you know? That stuff, that stuff, that was tough. And then... My roommate in college started selling dope, you heard me? All this stuff happened in a small amount of time. So when I started rapping, I had a lot built up on the inside to that it was like, it. man, I, I gotta talk about this stuff, you know? So for me, real, real quick, it became therapy, free therapy. I and think I, yeah. I think you, you know, when you, when you bought, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but when you bought it all in a nutshell and you put all those factors together, I always think about, the three days of dying, I always talk about that. You gotta go through your, you, you call it, you know, issues, but it's three days of dying, meaning you had to go through that in order to transform, you know? Did you get closer to God during that time? That's when I found God. Okay, or he found you, but yeah. at the end of the day, that's the three days, you know, when you start going through or losing your girl. They, these doors start closing, mm -hmm. and, and these doors are closing for a reason. That's God saying no, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, and basically getting you positioned, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. to make that decision, to be yeah. honest. So I think that's a beautiful thing, because I went through my three days of dying, and I, I love it, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be who I am today. Day, I wouldn't even have this wife. You look back on it and now, and it's you like, like best I, thing could ever happen. Best thing could have ever happened. I'm, I'm like, man, I was in tears, man, when, when these things were happening yeah, to me. Yeah. And now I'm looking back like, I would not be who I am without that stuff happening. That's so I'm real. thankful for it, you know? Yeah, like, like, life is amazing that way. Another thing that happened during college that was life altering is me and my partner, we were playing basketball at our apartment complex one day and we were victims of an armed robbery, wow. you know what I mean? So when a dude is holding a gun, you know, to my temple, you know what I'm saying? Threatening to kill me, man. And I'm thinking that's about to be a wrap for me. You know, I'm just sitting there like, dang, I ain't never thought I was gonna die like this. It's crazy. And thankfully I made it out that situation. Something happened. He put the gun up there. They ran off cause somebody was looking. But um, making it out of that, that let me know. You know how people say, live every day like it's your last, you know? It's hard to live every day like it's your last if you ain't never felt like it's about it's to be last, your last. Yeah. I felt like it was about to be my last. No, that's a real talk. Yeah. I, I get it. Um, yeah. yeah, so you, you I, when you went viral, you made this song, right, about this, the rappers, J50 and, and, and Wheezy, White Wheezy mm -hmm. um, which is crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what made you do it? And because you said courage, like you know, you had to be your confidence up. Mm -hmm. uh, some had to had to had to Something trigger happened. in you to say, "I'm gonna make this song." Yeah. So I was a I was a middle school teacher when I made that song. So at night I'd be hitting the studio and I was a rapper. But by day, man, I'm in the trenches with sixth graders, eighth graders, and as I'm teaching them, I'm seeing how influenced they are by rap music. And I'm seeing how miseducated they're being by rap music, you know what I mean? I'm seeing middle schoolers come in school with tattoos and they don't even know what the tattoos middle mean. School? Middle school, M.O.B. tatted on his arm, one of my students. I said, man, M.O.B., you know what that mean, bro? Money over, just right. all member of the bloods. Right. It's one of the two. And he looked at me and he was like, no, sir. I said, no, sir, what? I don't know what it means. I said, well, why you got it? Cause Lil Wayne got it tattooed on him. Wow. And that was his favorite rapper. It's moments like that. It's moments like one of my students who really I didn't get along with. Man, all my students loved me. They had this one dude. I just could not crack the code on how to get through to him. And dude actually wanted to fight me one day. You know what I mean? And I finally, man, I had to I had to block the exit to my class. I let everybody else out the class. I said, it's just me and you in here, bro. I said, you're not leaving this class till we talk, bro. Like. I love you, I got nothing against you. Like, let me know, what's up, man? You always got a boot in your lip. Like, you ready? To, you look like you ready to put hands on me. Like, what's going on? Stayed in that class for almost an hour with him. When it finally, you know, came down to it, I realized this brother had issues with submitting to male authority figures because his, his mom had some dude around him that, you know, I guess whoever she was dating at the time that was trying to get him to sell dope, you know what I mean? Saying like, oh, you want some new Jordans? You want that, da-da-da? Huh, go, go, go move this for me, you know right. what I mean? Like, 
and and he going through this at home in terms of just like being conflicted like hey is this is this what the definition of real manhood is and if it is then cool what i'm seeing from mr augustine in the classroom I ain't feeling this way, you know. I'm feeling this way because this dude putting money in my pocket and that, like, this just this this seemed like was cool. And I'm trying to deconstruct, you know, what he was like exposed to every day and his telling him, thinking, yeah, his dismantle thinking. his thinking. And that's tough because cognitively, a middle schooler is sitting there like you going against what's feeding me right now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, going through that type of stuff, bro, and seeing that. All the music that they'll recite, like, damn, I can't get you to learn your multiplication tables, but you know all the lyrics to Lil Boosie's song. You, like, like for real, that, that's what led me to make that song, bro. So I was like, let me address three of the rappers in the game. Jay-Z, 50 Cent, and Lil Wayne, who I know, they are smart. Regardless of what they rapping about, they smart enough to know that they ain't living that life anymore. You know what I mean? And I'm like, if you're smart enough to know that you came from that life, but you had to all the way separate from it because now you've elevated, I wish y'all was smart enough to know how much you impacting these kids and now to tell them something different in your music. I have a problem with you not living that way anymore, but you still glorifying that lifestyle. You know, and that's what I saw in all of their music at the time. Keep in mind, this is back in like 2009, 2010, 2011. Um, so that's why I did that song. And I always say it's not a, you know, in rap, when you say somebody's name, it's automatically implied like, oh, oh, we beefing. You call me out by name. This ain't no subtle subliminal that you threw. I say, I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna call y'all out by name, but it's not a diss song, it's a real song. And accountability does not have to be looked at as an attack. Did anyone ever reach out to you? Personally? Yeah. No, but they all, all three of them had people who rock with them that did reach out to me. Wow. Yeah, so Jay Z, they had people that all they all they told me was, yeah, he heard the song. Just know he heard the song, D. And I was like, so what he thought about it? Like, what he say? Like, da da da. They didn't want to tell me nothing mm -hmm. else. They're just like, just know he heard it. Fifty Cent, his people flew me up to New York to do an interview. You know, he got the website. This is yeah, fifty yeah, 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 They interviewed me and asked me about the song on his platform that yeah, he owns. This is fifty. Yeah. You know, so but he wasn't there. Uh, nah, I thought he was gonna jump out the closet or something during the interview. I was like, let me be ready for anything. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So they interviewed me, uh, and I wasn't afraid, bro. I actually met Fifty Cent uh, after I recorded that song. He was in Baton Rouge, and I gave him a CD that had that song on it. I said number seven on that album, bro. That song, it, that's a song I did about you, Jay Z, and Lil Wayne. Like, listen to it, bro. I'm saying some important stuff on there you know that's all I said and I gave it to him he looked at the CD he saw his name on the song title and he looked back at me and he was like alright mm -hmm. I don't know if he ever listened to it but he eventually heard it when that song blew up you know right. what I mean yeah. and Lil Wayne definitely heard it um, I got that confirmed by Mac Main you know okay yeah Mac Main shout out yeah shout out big shout out to Mac Main yeah, um, like Mac Main. got that confirmed by Mac Main also got that confirmed by Birdman and Slim because uh, they actually tried to sign me a little bit after that song. I remember. I, I heard something about that. I didn't agree with you on it, but you thought ahead. I you thought I should have signed to them. I I think so much bigger than certain people. You know what I mean when I say certain people. Just I think different, man. Like like I really feel like you 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 special. God got you in a position for a reason. You mm -hmm. know what I mean. And I don't think people understand the the gist of the natural man versus the spiritual man. Just cause one may be older than you and seem to be wiser and richer, they still not be in the spirit to realm, you totally something different. So you're a big brother. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So I felt like these are opportunities where somebody can get saved and helped because you're that powerful. Mm. Mm. So, do you understand where I'm coming I from? Totally understand. <laughs> I totally so, understand. That's so, all I'm saying. Not in a bad way. I know you did it and God put you in different situations where you've been able to help a lot more people. But at the end of the day, I just think that a lot of times, it was a couple of situations where I researched and I was like, man, they need this guy. Mm. So here's the thing. Can you have a relationship without being in business with somebody is the question. Yeah. Yes. And that's the part for me that I was just like, yo, I don't mind having a relationship, but in terms of having to be signed, like, I'm not really feeling the idea of being signed because truthfully, most of the people that got signed to them didn't blow up. Well, I can't go there with you. Man. When you think about it, you talking about Drake? Drake blew up. You talking about Nicki Minaj? She blew up. You talking about uh, Juvenile didn't blow up? He blew up. 
But you see what I'm saying? I mean, and now let me name twenty even, that did. But it ain't about. It ain't really about for me blowing up because that's the physical of it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I think as far as the paperwork, that's something. When you do sign up for something, you got to stand on what you sign up for. So mm-hmm. I don't know the situation as far as the paperwork, mm-hmm. but spiritually. Mm-hmm. It's a different world for me. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. You get gotcha. it? So I get it what yeah. you're saying. I know physical opportunity is going to definitely be there, mm-hmm. but spiritual is way more important, and I think people don't give that. It's just. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. like I said, you could have changed their whole cash money. might be something totally different. Man. Because of the power in you. That's all I'm saying. So I'm going to say this, too. One of the things I'm, I, I pride myself on is God has uniquely positioned me to be as bold as I am about being a man of God and having this message in my music and my whole mission vision movement is all about being real, righteous, and relevant. But at the same time, I got that authenticity that speaks to people who might currently be in a whole different headspace in their life. You know, I'm gonna show you this right quick. Like this is this two days ago. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah, that's so, hard. That's yeah, hard. Like, I like it. And and that's and that's him reaching out to me. Send that to me. Yeah, I send it to you. That's him reaching out to me. Like, you know, I don't mind saying in the interview, that's me and Kodak on FaceTime, yeah. Kodak Black. And when we talking on FaceTime for like thirty something minutes, just running it, you know what I mean? It ain't about no it ain't even about no business. That's it. It's about some it's about it's love. You see that smile, you know that's what I'm saying? It. Yeah. I'm thankful, bro, that like, That's powerful too. Yeah, and, and and the relationship hit different when you don't want anything from these people. That's true. At that time, bro, my my whole life wasn't what it is now. So yeah. with the cash money situation, it was like I get it. Yeah, bro, it was like man, I, I like I'm trying to figure it out. There right? you go. I'm trying to figure <laughs> it out right now. By the grace of God, it. I got to figure it out, my That's brother. It. Like we, no, we I get it. We, li- we living good right now. I figured that when I re- when I seen him, I was like he was younger. But I just know that God got something special in you because of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's powerful, man. Like, many people are not going to be able to reach the people me and you going to talk to. That's what this is all about, and I've told you that. You know what I mean? Like, and when I get that opportunity, it's an opportunity for me to inject something in them they'll never get. And it's not going to be forced on them. There you go. It's just going to be who I am. There you go. And that's the part right there. So, mm-hmm. it's... it's for, for that, for that, what you have to be in the midst of a certain group of people, no matter who it is, mm-hmm. it's going to change things. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's, so that's, that's what I've been doing, man. It was hard to say no to it though, bro. Like one time Slim, Slim, I was sitting down meeting with Slim in his hotel room and man, we were talking and I had a show that day, but when Slim called and told me he was in town and he wanted to meet with me, I was like, Dang, I don't want to miss out on this this meeting with Slim, but I had this show I was supposed to go do. So man, that's the only time in my career I ever like last second backed out of doing a show to go meet with Slim. And I told him this when I met with him, and he was like, "How much you was gonna get paid at that show?" And I told him, right? It was a few racks at the time. Um, man, he went in his pocket and just and just just gave me that, bro. So when you around that type of money back then, keep in mind back then where I was coming from making thirty nine thousand a year as a teacher, and I'm just like, man, this man just gave me like three G's just, yeah, just, just like, like that. that like it's nothing mm-hmm. you know I used to have to work about uh, almost a whole month to make three thousand dollars as a teacher you know when I'm seeing that it's hard to say no to that stuff man um but hopefully people feel me on this sometimes you could be focused on planting seeds in life and letting God use you God I got all these seeds I want to plant all around the world but you got to recognize that some of the soil that you're trying to plant those seeds on some of that soil is infertile yeah. So no matter how many seeds you plant on that soil, it's infertile. And it's like, are you going to waste your life just trying to plant seeds where you want to plant them at? Or are you going to be like, man, God is like organically opening all these doors for me to reach all these people and plant all these seeds. And for me, that was that's what I chose. And I think that's the best decision I could have made as a young brother coming up in hip hop is not to be selfish with my gift. Because. Yeah, all my partners, man, that's cash money, man. Go, man, what you mean? We grew up looking up to them dudes. But that's the difference. We grew up idolizing them dudes. But idolizing somebody is actually a sin. Definitely. You know, that's going against the Ten Commandments. We grew up looking at these people as legends. Now that I'm older and wiser, I'm like, we got to watch that word legend, bro. When we throw that word out there, it's like a legend of what? If you're a legend at poisoning our community, and making negativity sound good because you lyrical and because you got a, a fire flow, I don't want to call that legendary anymore. 
just because we grew up and it was mass marketed to us and people was like, man, these 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 the people that that's the spokesman for y'all city and all that. All right, cool. I could pull out the the good from from anything, but ultimately, I'm not idolizing nobody and I'm not calling people legends at this point who when you really break down what they're a legend of, it's like, man, that that contributed to more of what's wrong with my generation is that we grew up looking up to some of this. That's real. Um, like Cash Money, Master P, uh, No Limit, we've been campaigning to get them in the same room in the same setting. You know what I mean? For mm. us, just to try to try to just to look. It doesn't. Well, is it gonna change? This is just like Jeff Ford and me you're talking about Larry Hoover Jr.'s dad, Larry, who ate breakfast together. Certain things just need to be done symbolically. It means something. It could save one life, and that's powerful. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, I always look at these opportunities and these platforms and these ways that we're able to deal with these people. Now today, if D1 gets this opportunity to deal with cash money or to deal with whoever, it's a whole nother mature level of who this guy D1 is. You, you see go. what I'm there saying? So it, I get it. I, yeah. I understand it. And I know, but I just know you're a powerful, powerful brother when mm. you come down to influence. Look who you got on the phone. Uh, I, I could see you with, with a NBA young boy the same way. I could see you with a with a, a, a Fred O'Bain. Fred O'Bain. That's my little student. I was his teacher. Okay, Fred O'Bain. That's you my know what I mean? Man. I hear things. I think yeah, Fred O'Bain locked up right now. No, 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 no not Fred O'Bain. He, he, he out of where? Uh, Fredo is out of Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, no, I was talking yeah. about. Who's the boy out of Little Rock, Arkansas? Uh, um, his, uh, 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 Trap Boy Freddy? No, not no, 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 no. He out. He out of Dallas. What's Bankroll Bank Freddy. Bank. That's there what you I go. meant to say. He yeah. locked up. Yeah, okay, yeah. so so Fredo brings is the one that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chose talked about on here, wasn't it? Yeah, that he do music with with Fredo Banks. Yeah, yeah, DJ shows he showed yeah, up. Chose yeah, Chose called me and we we talked, but he came on. He was saying that it was a uh, just being in the studio. It gets tough sometimes around that environment and who might be looking for who. Uh, you know, oh, Chose said that. Yeah, he did. Man, it was a man, deep thing he said. Fredo, on Fredo bro, uh, man, Fredo. I've seen so much maturity. Do you realize that when Fredo and NBA young boy chose to squash their beef publicly yeah, a few months that. back. I remember that. Do you realize like how many lives that saved? Yes. When they chose to do that publicly? That's hard. That's stuff that our generation, we like, man, why Ja Rule and 50 Cent can't squash their beef? Mm -hmm. Why why Birdman and Master P can't get together? And you got two brothers in their mid-20s that chose to say, hey, we're going to put our differences to the side. You know what I mean? That's it's me. been real bloodshed behind that beef. You know what I mean? So I love that, and I and I was proud of him, and I hit him Did personally. You tell him? Yeah. I told him, I said, oh, I said, I said, and you know how I told you, I don't call people legends or I don't yeah. idolize people no more. And I was like, I think I, that's exactly what I told him. I said, what you just did today was legendary. That's real. This puts you in a whole different space. Yeah, it's just a different world when you looking think looking at things from a spiritual eye. A there lot, you go. A lot of it is ego too, to me, and, and, and they don't take themselves out of the flesh because when we ask, when we ask people about Master P or um, Birdman, it's like, well, or even like Mo3 with, um, before he had passed rest, rest with in peace. With Yellow and Trap. With yeah. Yellow and Trap and stuff. People always say, that'll never happen. It was too much bloodshed that happened for them to even come back together. Really? And I'm like, and that's that's always the same answer. It's too much bloodshed. It's too many people are That's just both unforgiveness sides. is what you're there saying. There you go. That's that's all I'm hearing is unforgiveness. Exactly. They ain't read the Bible. They must not know how much blood was shed in the Bible. And God still used those same people who were murderers. You oh, know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Paul who, who was from the song. Come on, man. It turned them into Paul. You know what I mean? They don't see it, how... David was still seen as a man after God's own heart. And David out here messing with Bathsheba, got Bathsheba's husband murked, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, you ride a hit tight. Come on, man. So that's, that's what happens when we apply like human knowledge and human what we call wisdom to the spiritual realm of life. Mm -hmm. Like unforgiveness is a thing that human beings, it's easy as a human to be like, nah, I ain't never forgiven that person because of what they did, if you're thinking in human terms. But when you apply spiritual wisdom to the life we live, it pulls a side out of you that's not natural. You know what I mean? And to forgive people, that's something spiritual. Like, naturally, we don't want to forgive because we don't forget. Remember Rick Ross had an album? Um, Rick Ross had an album called God Forgives, I Don't. Yeah, I see. Remember that, remember that album title? God Forgives, I Don't. I'm just like, man, bro, that's... That sound, that sound blasphemous right there. Like we, 
once we say that we don't forgive people, it's just like we basically saying we're not willing to grow. No, but unforgiveness, unforgiveness is something that um, the human generation, I call it ego, unforgiveness. I always talk to people about that. I always say, you know, our lives is not our own. And when I say that, meaning like situations that we go through, it's not always because of, okay, so I was saying that, you know, in life, and I, I say this all the time, how I look on life, I look on life like when you're born, God clock you in at this job called life. Life. And you have every, each person have a job to do. We might not know exactly what our job is, but when your job is done, he clocks you out. And when I tell some people this, they're like, but a baby who was just born and died right then and there, I said, that baby's job might have been to touch the nurse mm. that witnessed it or mm. whoever is around the mama, the daddy who saw this person pregnant for all these nine months and mm. going through all these different changes. That person could have been on drugs and stopped taking wow. drugs because of that child. We don't know. That child finished their job, so God took that child. Wow. Because they touched whoever they're supposed to touch and change it. That's why in life, I always say, like, live your life to the best you can because whoever you touch might not always come to you and say, thank you so much, you changed my life. Yeah. But because of you, somebody who's watching your life changed it. And then now we're in a, in a generation where everything is on social media, being recorded, whatever. You can touch so much more by just being true to what we believe in. Yo, that, that makes so much I see why you married her, bro. Yeah, well, you know, I am. I, I did what God gave me the ability to do. I was a changed <laughs> man, and I I needed to do. I married her in four months when I met her, and we've been together for twenty years. Man, I walk by faith, not by sight. There you go. I I, I get it. Cause what you just said, that is so real. Cause a lot of times when you try to talk to people about God, they they look for like the most extreme example of something to go against what you're trying to tell them. Oh, man, God has a purpose for all of our lives. And they, their first thing they'll say will be, well, what about a baby that died when they're mm -hmm. three months old? Well, da, da, da. And I love that response because mm -hmm. that takes wisdom to know that God can God can indirectly bless people. Even use babes. Yeah, e even even through a non-traditional way, even through even through death. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the, the process mm -hmm. of that baby being born, the process mm -hmm. of that mother being pregnant could have been a blessing to other people. Exactly. And and and, and we don't know who it is we that we need know. to be touching, but we have a job to touch each other. Oh yeah. In wow. some way or form. You know, Instagram made it to where everybody want they want to get their flowers right now. Like they want to see it. They want to be like, oh, if I if I ever blessed you, I need to see it and document it and be able to post it on my page. But like you said, a lot of the people who I learned that by doing music because I'm like, I got so many millions of streams on my music, but I could never meet all these millions of people in life. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn to be okay with, hey. What you choosing to put on this album, D1, this is going to reach people that you will never see in person. But you should love those people and, and appreciate the fact that you got their attention span for while they're listening to your music and handle that with care, bro. Mm -hmm. don't, be, don't be negligent with the opportunity to, to change their life and don't, don't fumble that opportunity to really like, you know, sow some seeds of wisdom and godliness into them. Exactly. Wow. Um, David and Goliath was your first album? It was. What was uh what um what what possessed you to, to do that? Was it because your name is David and because you read up on David and, and not just Bathsheba but the fact that he was uh a Rudy boy. Mm. He was you know what I mean, he was young and he was the one that they least expected. It was more it was more that one, underdog, you know, yeah. underdog mentality. Me getting into the rap game at the time, everybody telling me, Bro, you you're not gonna make it trying to go against the grain, bro. The people that's popping in our state right now is Lil Wayne, Kevin Gates, Boosie. You know, this is this is what they want to hear. You trying to be so different. You ain't going to make it like that. That that didn't make me change. That made me go twice as hard. I felt like the underdog, like David. So I said, David and Goliath. This whole industry is Goliath, you heard me? But I know what my slingshot is. My slingshot is this microphone. I know that with this microphone, when I use this for the purpose God designed it, I'm going to be able to slay this Goliath. Wow. Here we are. That's huge. I, I wanted to ask you about uh Dr. Boyce. Was it that, oh, that Dr. Boyce Watkins? Yeah, yeah, Watkins. What what uh when when I say that name, what comes to mind? OG, mentor, a brother who took me in and gave me the cosign that I was running behind so many rappers trying to get. 
You know, mm-hmm. I was driving state to state trying to get T.I. to co-sign me, trying to trying to get Wayne to co-sign me, trying to get Ludacris to co-sign me. Um, man, I just gave my CD out to so many people. You know, I was that dude giving my CD to Jermaine Dupree, BG, Birdman, like like all these all these people, right? Meanwhile, Dr. Boyce Watkins, never even met him in person, but brother ended up hitting me up on the internet one day. Brother, you are a lyrical genius. My D1, man, you amazing. Can I interview you? And, and I want to put you on my platform. And, you know, I want to I wanna turn all my people on to you. Me seeing somebody embrace me like that? Come on, what else I'm going to do but say, man, bro, you got, you got my friendship. You got my loyalty, bro. Thank you for this. And... When you got people that's co-signing you like a Boyce Watkins, brother named the Hip Hop Doc, he's a doctor in Baton Rouge, a doctor, right? Who, me and him did some work together where we would go around to different schools and I would, I would write these raps for us where we were rapping about like exercise and eating healthy and stroke and, and heart disease and just things to teach you about, you know, healthy uh, lifestyles. Mm-hmm. He was a big co-sign of mine. I realized like, man, God really got a different path for me. My cosigns, the people that's willing to put their arm around me and open doors for me, it's not the rappers I grew up idolizing. You know what I mean? So when you talk to me about legends, you know, I'm not going to be naming rappers as legends. I'm going to name people as legends who are A, successful in what they're doing, but B, the way that they're doing what they're doing is what's making them legendary because it's like, you're doing stuff that's positive for the community. You're doing stuff that God will be proud of and you successful at it. That's legendary to me. Mm, I like it, man. I I, I really I really enjoy uh, hearing the the way that uh, you know you really went against the grain and the, and, and the thing because because you don't see that a lot. But being a, a, a you were a, were Catholic at first, but now you you chosen to be. I don't like to say Christian. I, I I'm Protestant, you know, like just you know, Martin Luther said the just shall live by faith and he went with that. You know what I'm saying? Like when you read the book for what's there and you you walked on the hot desert sand and you tied your camel to a date tree, as I say. You're reading what's there and you're living for what's there and it's more for me, it was more directed to me mm. as a personal relationship with God. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the other way was more like I'm just going to the beat of somebody else's drum. drum. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you think of the other ways that you see others prescribe the, the you know, take the take the prescription. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for you to change it, how big was that to say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing it this way? Man, it got to that point where I would feel so guilty if I did it any other way. You know, if I was in this rap game putting out poison and putting out content that I know is killing our people, I wouldn't be able to sleep well at night. You know, I know it's hard, bro. Like, I got, I got a verse. I want to spit this verse for Lyric. you. Right? All right, check this out. I say, what's the point of writing all of these lyrics if I'm rapping to an audience that ain't trying to hear it? They'd rather me blow a bag than rap about building wealth. They'd rather me get some brain than rap about mental health. Don't censor me. Eventually, try to make sense of me. I don't need your dollars. I need you to think sensibly. You feel good now that you're vegan. Oh, that's funny. If you're still promoting garbage, you're just a healthy dummy. My city don't even love me. I'm calling it how it is. I'm a threat to the power structure that's brainwashing our kids. I'm fracturing all the egos of illegitimate heroes. I only look up to one man, because he died, then he rose. I keep it too real, because life don't last too long. If everybody likes me i'm doing something too wrong maybe in time they'll appreciate my words like nipsey till then i'm gonna see how far keeping it real gets me yeah and i like that man. yeah that's i think i I think that's so important you know to be able to understand who you are self-awareness is so so real bro bro i bro i'm gonna tell you self-awareness was when i first got into the rap game i wanted to go platinum you know when i first first got into it real quick though i realized Man, look at all these people who went platinum that they ain't happy. They ain't got no peace. They went platinum, they still fool around. They, they not getting along with their own family. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff. Rather than going platinum in a rap game, I'd rather go platinum in heaven. And and, and, and I want to say something on that note. I want to ask you something. Like, when you see people get up and receive the awards and they say, I want to thank God. <laughs> Bro, I'll be ready to throw something at the TV, man. Them people... Stop thanking God 
for your foolishness and your ratchetness winning an award. You hear me? Just because you won an award, that ain't God. You hear me? When when people when people get up at the award shows and they think that they gotta realize the devil can elevate you too. The devil can really bless you as well and say, oh, that's all it takes is some success for you to keep doing that and keep going down that road to destruction. Bet, I'm finna elevate you. I'm finna elevate you. Man, that's not of God, man. I hate when people get at the award shows and they want to thank God for that. Now, that doesn't mean that God can't still use them, but that ain't God that's pleased with what you're doing and putting out there. And some people get mad at that. And you know what they try to tell me? Come on, D, this is black people that's elevating from poverty and now they creating wealth for themselves and for generations after them. And it's like, that's selfish to only think about the wealth that they creating for themselves, for their family members, and for their close circle. Meanwhile, their music is reaching millions and miseducating millions of people. So I'd rather, I'd rather get those millions of people back as opposed to saying, well, wealth got created for 20 people. Wealth doing what? Real talk. The thing that um, I've heard a lot of people say, I want to say a handful of people that come on here, and they'll say something like they want to do that righteous music, they want to do the good music because they have kids who is listening to them, they don't want to you know, do all of this anymore, but they're not at a stage to stop. Because what they say, they want to keep doing this type of music so they can get the millions of people then they can gradually change and not lose their crowd. They starting off when you do the righteous music, you only have twenty people who because they don't really want to hear that. So like for them, they want to capture the whole audience first, then switch it. That sound like that sound like teeny weeny 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 bitty small faith that those people have. Cause if you got small faith, you're gonna say, Oh yeah, I never make it rapping righteous, rapping real, rapping about some 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 stuff that's that's healthy for our community. I'll never make it. It sounds like you got small faith. But we serve a big God. You hear me? That's what I said earlier. We serve a big that's old real. God. And mm -hmm. and if if you got skills, just cause you're doing something real don't mean that it's an excuse for it to be lame and corny. You still gotta be a beast. You know what I'm saying? Like when I get on the microphone, like I give people goosebumps. You know what I mean? Like with what I'm spitting. You still gotta be a dog at what you do. But to say, oh, they don't want to hear that. Like, people don't want what you bring to the table. They got enough rappers. You got to be so dope at what you do that you make these people stop their life and be like, who is this? And when you can do that, you could be rapping about anything. It's just, do you have that it factor? You when, feel me? When you think about you, uh, people look at you and they see you rap, like, say you got songs with people who do rap in those realms whether it be Big Crit or whoever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that may rap about something else that you guys might have not rapped about at the time. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, you know, the critics? Because the critics are out here. Like, they're going to yeah. be looking. They look in the, the accuser always is looking to accuse and try yeah. to catch you up. Like, how do you get around those conversations? Everybody is a sinner. Like, I hope them people not watching this, uh, this interview right now thinking I'm perfect. I hope they're not thinking I don't still struggle and I don't still sin and that I'm asking for forgiveness on a daily basis. You heard me? So that's real important to me, bro. Like it's it's crazy if people thinking, oh man, you got a. Uh, There's you, nobody perfect. Yeah, like like you got this person on your song. I got a song with the game. I got a song with Juvenile. I got a mm -hmm. song with Lupe Fiasco, Big Crit. Man, come on, man. Like, mm -hmm. how are these people any different than if I have a song with a gospel artist or a uh, uh, Christian artist? You think that Christian artist ain't a sinner as well? Mm -hmm. If anything, it should be a blessing to you that. Man, the, the game told me this. When the game hopped on the song with me, I got the voice memo to prove it. I'll let you hear. He said, hey, bro, this is the first song I ever did in my whole career where I ain't curse, mm -hmm. but I respect you that much. I know you don't curse, so I ain't, I ain't curse on this song. Wow, he did that. He did that. That's powerful, man. Hey, that's that's real powerful. That's what I was telling you about earlier. That's the power I tell you you possess. Yeah. Is that you don't know. It's like a, having something that's so powerful in, in your possession and, and, and not understanding how powerful it is at the time when the situation presents itself. That's what I was talking about earlier. Gotcha. Because it's so powerful what's mm -hmm. in you mm -hmm. that it's more powerful than anything that you could ever think or imagine or see. Mm. And that's what's big about it. Bro, you you so right, bro. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you this. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Um, 
when you are in a when you are in a secure uh, situation, like career wise and financially, it hit way different when you have these interactions. Because I used to always want something from people that were like bigger than me or further along. So I don't even think I was in the head space back then to minister to a lot of the big dogs in this game because I needed them. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't need them now. You They're know, in trouble. Yeah, I don't <laughs> need them. So now when me and Kodak on Facetime or when me in the game doing the song, I don't have to be like, man. We just gonna talk about whatever. Or if I'm hanging out with 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 Master P or with Juvenile or whatever, when I'm with Juvenile, we talking about me being at Harvard University and me teaching at Harvard and, and what I got going on. And it's like, I don't mind. I just don't mind being myself at this point. You know, that's. Tell me about um, how did you get the opportunity to be working at Harvard? Yeah, so I got a fellowship, and the fellowship is what allowed me to get up there. The fellowship was something where it's a it's a blend of hip hop and education, right? And I have some really interesting research that I'm doing on the role that hip hop plays as a teaching tool in the black community. Mm -hmm. So me going up there to Harvard, I wasn't supposed to be teaching classes and whatnot at first. I was supposed to be up there doing research. So once they found out who I was at Harvard, though, they were like, Oh, he one of them ones. Like this, this dude was special. Like we want him to teach over here. Come so you teach bombarded him. I, your way in. I kind of did. I kind of did. So uh, I will be going back to Harvard and and doing a, another year of my fellowship this That's year. Awesome. But also, in addition to that, I'm going to be a professor this year at Tufts University, which is in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm. And I'll be teaching a course that I'm designing this summer on hip hop and the role hip hop plays as an agent for social change. Cause um um I think it was DJ what's what's his no burn one. Okay. He also teaches where hip hop is concerned. I can't remember the university he teaches at, but he te talk, teaches about hip hop in his school. Really? And yeah, and so not all schools teach this, right? No. No. See? And that's the thing, because I think they weren't teaching it as well. And the, he went ahead and went up there and pitched the idea, and they loved it. And that's how he ended up getting in there. Wow. But it's an awesome, because a lot of kids are, that's what all these kids are listening to. And if you can, and another part that he was trying, because I was like, how many females do you have in those classes? Okay. And okay. he was like, not many. Okay. So in your class, how many females did you have? Uh... It was like 50-50. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. See, now these, these, that's good. Yeah, these uh, these women nowadays, I mean, women run hip-hop nowadays. Nowadays. You don't think so? Yeah. But he didn't have that for some reason. Okay. I don't know. Okay. It could be the school. Well, you know, I, I ain't no ugly dude either, you know what I mean? So uh, they probably <laughs> be like, dang, this is my teacher. I'm just playing. Now, I ain't trying to say he ugly. I was just joking. But, yo, hip-hop is really starting to break into like academia like my man Lupe Fiasco he's at mm -hmm. MIT mm -hmm. he's teaching at MIT uh, I know Bun B was at Rice yes. University yes. for a while uh, shout out to Bun uh, there's multiple people like you said Burn One is doing his thing mm -hmm. so I'm at Tufts University and at Harvard mm -hmm. this is where hip hop should be going because now it allows people to see that there's a lot of thought that goes into the role hip hop is playing like in, in real life and there's a lot of thought that goes into making a marketing plan making an image for yourself as a brand there's a lot of thought that goes into the business uh, the business side there's a lot of thought that goes into the creation of rap music so when you're teaching um, hip hop you teach all of everything no so I, tell I, me about your course yeah I get as specific as possible so Hip hop has been at the forefront of a bunch of social movements. We've heard rap songs about everything from police brutality mm -hmm. to uh, feminism to LGBTQ rap mm -hmm. to black power movement. We've heard we've heard hip hop be the soundtrack to a lot of these movements, protest rap, you know, all this type of stuff. With that being said, my course is showing the role that hip hop has played in helping to bring about social change. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because rap music has been at the forefront of that for a while. So that's what I'm doing. And um, I'm still designing the course. Uh, I got I got to the to the end of the summer to fully finish designing it. But it's going to be. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. So Harvard just embracing you up there. Yeah, they loving me. You know, you know why? Cause I'm not trying to fit in. 
You know, I'm 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 being myself and I'm bringing something unique and authentic to that campus. They're like, man, that New Orleans swag and just that that boldness. Like, de- I didn't got in arguments with people on Harvard's campus, bro, because I'm going up there as a Christian, as a man of God, who really from that South, who really spit fire, you know what I mean, lyrically, and who really know his stuff academically. Sometimes that'll rub people the wrong way. I tell people, I, I got into an argument with some people at Harvard one day, some of my peers, and... I told him, I said, before I'm pro-black, I'm pro-God. So some of the excuses that we make for some of our behavior in the black community, and we say, and we don't want to criticize it because it's like, oh, we black people, though, we supposed to champion each other. Like, no, would God champion this? That's what I care about more. I'm always going to be for what God will say before, is this a good look for black people? And sometimes they don't like that. I got into a big argument on Harvard's campus about that, you know? Mm. I, I, I get it, man. I, like I say, you're powerful, bro, and there's a lot of things that God building you up for. You know, I, I definitely wanted you to go on all the, I wanted you to go on that Wendy Williams show. They needed you. Yeah. I'm that guy. I'm just, I'm yeah. telling you, I'm different, bro. Now, now, you know what I did do? I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> I, I probably didn't. Instead of, no, no, it's funny you said Wendy Williams. I could have went on Wendy Williams' show, but I, I went on the the real. You did, you know that mm-hmm. one. So I had to, I had to make a choice. They was like, "Look, we both want you. You could only choose one. It's almost like a non compete. Oh, okay. You come on here, you can't go on there." So I felt like the real. I would have chose the real too. The real, yeah. yeah like I it was, would've. it was. They were younger. They kind of had like a cooler, just vibe, you know. Uh, so I went on the real. Yeah, man. It, it like, was easier. Yeah, it was it was easier too. <laughs> it, it, it was easier because you don't know what Wendy finna. That's that's no. the whole game for me. Yeah, feel like feel like it's gonna be messy and, and full of gossip but if you're going. What's in you? Yeah, that's true. What's in? If I'd have went on Wendy, it, it'd have been something. Tra- I, I'd have fooled around it. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy might have. Wendy might have uh, changed the pace, the pace cha- a little changed bit. Changed her whole vibe. That's where I'm at. I'm telling you, see yeah, where I'm that, at. That I'm part. Like- so it ain't always about taking the easy there road. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now She's I saying drink some. See how I'm, I'm under scrutiny over here. I see that. No, that's not scrutiny. That's love, bro. Thank you. Tell I wish him. I had somebody telling me, "Hey D, your voice sounded a little scratchy, my brother. Go ahead, all and get you him. some. That'll be cut out. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> hey y'all. Boss talk got me in here, double cupped up, hey. drinking lean. I don't know what kind of influence yeah, they trying to have man. on me, man. So, so no, but I, I think just the things I keep saying is just just moments where I feel like you know, um, you can help people. And in certain mm. instances where it may have seemed like, let me go back this way, next time go against it because those are the vulnerable moments mm. where growth happens. Tell me this, um, is it worth is it worth going against the grain if you know that financially you're going you're gonna to take a hit because of it? Some people think that when you think of, uh, you know, Basically, godliness, you know, having things is, 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 is on earth is, is big. Don't get me wrong. Some people contend that, 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 you know, things is something that's confusing. You know what I mean? You've, you've, you've taken a lot of moves, because, but things, you already alluded to the fact of where they come from sometimes. They don't always come from come God. From man. God. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. these are tools and places where the devil plays game because he's the master and power of the principality of the air in the world. So Man. you just got to be careful when you look at it from that perspective because yeah. the spiritual one may not look as enticing when it comes to monetarily gain, mm-hmm. but in the end, it's going to be the best choice for you. So, you know, that's why, that's why, like, when I signed my record deal, you know, I ended up signing with RCA Records, yeah, right, yeah, a few years that. ago. When I signed my record deal, you know, you get a, a pretty nice check. You get an advanced check. And the first thing everybody was asking me, like, what kind of car you going to buy? That's what everybody wanted to know. What kind of car you going to buy? And at the time, I was driving my, my car from college. I had a 1998 Honda Accord. And I thought about it, and I said, you know what? I'm going to keep this car, not because I need it and I can't afford something else, but as a symbol to show people that you could be winning in life, but your wins don't have to look like jewelry and cars. I said, I'm gonna get out of debt. So I paid my student loans off when I signed my deal, you know? And now that I look back years later after doing that, I love that I could say, man, I got the same success as a lot of these people. You do. But y'all just looking at the wealth that I'm showing 
Mm. Y'all not knowing the real estate investments that I got. Mm. Y'all not knowing the stock investments that I got. You know what I'm saying? Y'all not knowing the private uh, investments that I have. Y'all not knowing the residual passive income that I've been able to generate through being a rapper. You know what I mean? All this came from rapping. You know what I mean? And that's the part where I want people to say, hey, if you could walk around and not have ops and not have to walk around and worry about having a security guard. Look but over your shoulder. Yeah, would live with that paranoia. And if you could still be successful and still be out here winning, I want that idea of success. That's what I want people to look at and say, yeah, give me that all day. You, you, you know, when you asked me about, you know, back years ago, 10, 12, maybe 15 years ago, when you would see the prosperity gospel, you would see people, people would look at people because they had a big car, the big house, the big church, mm -hmm. and they would look up to these ministers, man, the big boys, you know, we got them here in the city from T.D. Jakes to, we got uh, Ibach, uh, Ricky Rush, we got all type of big ministers here, Joel Osteen, and all these different ministers, but when you, when you start to think about it, you know, there's a scripture that talks about some people thinking that gain is godliness, but 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 godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So you got to look at it from a different mm. eye scope. You can't just look look at it just in a way to where this here may be the best decision to get me here. You got to look at it from that peace that you get from God. And those the, the, a lot of time that come from having these different situations happen where you in those maybe irritable situation for the flesh, but in the spirit you winning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's the, yeah, that's the game. Man, bro, that's, and that's what we need people to hear. What you said just now is like, it's like I'm a basketball fan. So it's almost like we saying, hey, we've been looking at this scoreboard all game. We're looking at that scoreboard right there that's keeping score on who winning. What we trying to get people to do is to start looking at life by looking at a whole different type of scoreboard. You know, that's that godly it. game is a whole different type it's of scoreboard than over here. This this scoreboard is gonna say how many cars you got, you know, what size are your rims, um, what kind of jewelry you got, like like just the same old stuff that we always hear. That's that's what this is, you know what I mean? Designer, what designer brand you wearing, you know what I'm saying? Like that godly scoreboard hit way different. I'll tell you one thing, that scoreboard over there, it's not going to have you with anxiety like this one will, sitting there thinking like, damn, I ain't got enough followers, or damn, I'm looking at everybody on Instagram, and their life's so lit, and okay, that's the new brand, everybody wearing Dior, okay, cool, I got to go get some Dior to get put up points on that scoreboard. This scoreboard, God going to be like, man, you could wear that dingy white t-shirt that's in your closet, you know what I'm saying, that you, that, that you wear three days a week anyway, you could wear that, I ain't tripping. You can fool around. You don't have to ever become a multi-millionaire or even a millionaire on this scoreboard and you still could be good in my book. You know what I mean? You ain't got to be lit on the ground. You ain't got to be verified. You ain't got to pay for your blue check. You ain't got to do none of that over here. You ain't even got to have Instagram and you can still be putting up major numbers on my scoreboard. That's real, man. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> I, like I said, that cash money move, man, I, I, I always think about different things that you, you like I said, you're very impactful mm. and you're going to, you're going to do a lot of more, more things than you've done just yet so far. I mean, talking to Birdman, I talked to Birdman on the phone and he's not the same Birdman. I just talked to him the other day. He's For real? The, yeah, but he's not the same Birdman when he was young, you know, he's a different Birdman as you evolve. Evolves. Everybody evolving, man. Really? So this is the whole game. Like, where are we going to be? How we going? How we going to respond to these opportunities we get and in injecting God into these situations, bro? Man, what you talk to Birdman about, man? And mm -hmm. I'm, I, I talk to a lot of people. That's GD. You know GD. Yeah, GD. Is he the spokesman or not? Of course. That's my. Oh, that's my dog. Okay, so if he the he, spokesman, then you know what it is. Like he, he, we working, he, he, he we working, man. Together. Yeah, yeah, we working to that's try my, to make sure dude. that we do the right thing for our culture and for the South. You know, I'm a big South advocate. Mm. So basically, it's a a lot of times that we, we, we being pushed information down upon us. We mm. need to be pushing information from bottom to the top. And, and from far, for, so we can see it from a clear scope where it can be seen properly. Mm. Because we got some down here and a lot of time it's diluted. You never hear about the albums and the, the, the albums where you can listen to them straight through. We never mentioned in the top five. We got to change that scenario. Yeah, I'm about to put my 10th album out in August. That's hard. 10th album in my career is called Uno. So that's oh, my yeah, nickname. Uno. Yeah, people call me Uno. That's my nickname. But the album... 
UNO is an acronym for Underdogs and Outcasts. Okay. Mm. UNO, Underdogs and Outcasts, because that's what I'm doing this album for, bro. It's for all the underdogs that's out there. That's it. All the people that's like, man, the world's sleeping on me. I'm David, you heard me? Yeah. And I see this big Goliath and everybody's sleeping on me. And all the outcasts, all the people that's like, man, I, I just can't seem to fit in, man. Everybody thinking that I'm different. I'm different. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Embrace that. Embrace being different. So UNO coming out August 18th. That's going to be my 10th album, bro. I need to interview Big Crit, so you need to set that up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I've been I've been wanting to interview this guy, but I don't. He you can't get a hold of him online. I don't have no. Well, look, Kiki, I didn't talk to him yet because of what happened with Big Pokey, but and R.I.P. to Big Pokey. But it's different. I talk to me and Kiki talk a lot, so I'm trying to figure out how to get him. But you talk to him too, so yeah. Make sure you holler at him for me because yeah, I'm definitely trying to rock out with that guy. Word. Yeah, yeah you, I'll be trying to talk to all of them. For real? Yeah, because I'm on your mission. Yeah, you on that same. <laughs> hey, just know Crit, Crit one of us, bro. Oh, yeah. Crit one of us, bro. I'll find out. Like no, that heart. I, I, I Crit, hear you. I Crit, hear you. Crit, Crit one of us, bro. Like, he he is. He, he, he his, his heart all the way in the right place, bro. Um, You know, man, everybody got their own path, bro. Everybody got their own path, and everybody. what? How can you tell a struggling Christian from a hypocrite? <sighs> oh, man. I don't I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's not for us to be able to tell. That's, that's between, all I'm saying. That's exactly. between them and God. That's exactly. it. Now we might not be able to tell, but if we observe it, then we should do what we call as Christians to do according to the Word of God, Correct. which it. is we shouldn't be afraid to approach those people and try to hold them accountable or or lead with love in terms of like confronting what they got going on. But it's not our place to judge them. You know. Uh, uh, in a negative manner automatically and jump to conclusions but it's also not our job to turn a blind eye to it no that's so true so these brothers that's claiming to be Christians especially in the rap game or claiming to be men of God or they want to hold a trophy up I'd like to thank God for this award you know what I'm saying <laughs> hey man I'm coming see you man I gotta talk to you right quick man cause you said God's name you know what I mean like I gotta, I gotta come see about that like and if I can't get in touch with you personally like I can get in touch with a lot of y'all now then that's when I make a song like J50 and Wheezy you hear but me? you know it's, uh, you know if they don't say giving our glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's a different world because mm. you never know what God they talking about what God they talking about a lot of them think that they God, bro. Did you hear what I just said? I feel you. So you, you might right. walk up on a situation where it's not even. We a assume that it's yeah, the same. Yeah, may not even be talking about know. that mm. a lot of times. So I, you just got to look at it from a different scope when you're dealing with it. You got to be led of the spirit to talk to these people. To man. talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's that's good. That's, that's good. That's the game. whole game. That's good game. Man, um, so how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link up with you? Yeah, so if y'all watching this on YouTube right now, definitely uh, hit my YouTube channel, man. I got a great YouTube channel. We. I think we had almost 150,000 subscribers. I want to keep them uh, running up. You know, I got the YouTube plaque. Uh, I so did too. That, that feels good. Hard, right? Yeah, that feel good. I say when people don't show it, they ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fake. So, <laughs> so subscribe to the YouTube page, D1 Music, D-E-E, -E, the number one music. Uh, my Instagram been jumping. I got about 100,000 new Instagram fans hey. in like the last two months, bro. Like, I got some songs that's been going crazy and some interview clips. Instagram, same thing, D1 Music. D-E-E, -E, the number one music. Same thing for TikTok, same thing for, uh, what, they got threads now? Yeah, yeah, they have threads. threads. Twitter, uh, I'm a D1 Music on everything. And most importantly, y'all, two things. If you want some merch, some Mission Vision merch, yeah, that's my that. clothing like line. That. Yeah, be real, be righteous, be relevant. You want some hoodies, some sweatpants, some t-shirts, some socks, all that, go to missionvisionlifestyle.com. Make sure y'all go get that merch so you could be a walking billboard for this movement, you heard me? And secondly and lastly, um, make sure that you go stream my actual music. Because it's one thing to hear this and be like, man, that dude real, that dude smart, man. I like what he, man, him and Boss talk, they did that. Go listen to the music, though, because the music is where you're going to learn my life story. The music is where you're going to be like, man, d One speaking into my heart right now. This song, this album helped me. Man, I got a lot of music out there on all streaming platforms. It's just D1. D-E-E dash the number one. Tap in. The songs Tell I picked me. out was Jason Jeter. Okay. Walking Revolution. Okay. J-15 Weezy and David and Goliath was the project I looked at. Word. So I just rocking with you, man. Just appreciate you for the whole movement and the whole music, man. It's hard, hard, that's, hard. That's love. Tell me your top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any, any genre. genre. Any genre. Any genre. Oh my gosh. Number one. Number one. 
Number one. Oh man, bro, this, I, I gotta go with I gotta go with Nas. 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 Yep. Yep. I've been listening to Nas's music almost my whole life. If mm-hmm. somebody held my attention that long, that's saying something about him. So Nas will be number one. Number two. Number two. Just for the sake of the movement that this brother has been at the forefront of, Bob Marley. And number three. She's and smiling for <laughs> Number three. She's that Jamaican man. You see that? Well, she got half. She's like, I like D1. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> number and three. number three. Number three. I'm going to go with the one and only Tupac Shakur. Mm. Yeah. 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 Like, we still talking about that brother almost 30 years after his death, man. You know? Yeah. Now notice, everybody that I named, it ain't just music with them. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. You know, Bob Marley, it's a movement. Movement. Tupac, it's a movement. Nas, it's a movement. Mm -hmm. Nas Nas made it okay to not be a a gangster that's just all the way just jumping out there, busting the guns and all that type of stuff. Nas made it okay to be an intellectual dude that was still from the streets. Like, yeah, I'm from the streets and all that, but I ain't with all that... you know what I mean? Like I, I'm the I'm the I'm the philosophy type dude. I'm the I'm the dude that's sophisticated, like sophisticated, but from the streets. And I think Nas gave birth to a whole generation of people who he gave permission to be like a J Cole, a Kendrick Lamar, a D One. You know what I mean? So I like D One. That's the one right there. One last question I have for you, and um, what do you say to people who say that you do gospel rap, a uh, Christian rap, or a Chris, Christian rap? I say, have you listened to my music? That's the first thing I ask them. And 99% of the time they say, oh, I, I, I mean, uh, n- n- no. Okay, so you ain't listen to the music. Because if you listen to the music, whatever you call my music, whatever type of rap you say it is, I'm okay with that. However it speaks to you. If you listen to my music and if it make you be like, yeah, like this is what I would classify as Christian rap, then that's perfectly fine. But if you listen to the music and you like, nah, this is conscious rap or this is just rap. This is just Southern rap that just got a message in it. But this is just life music. You know what I mean? Then that's how you feel. It's not my job to tell you how to classify my music. It's your job to classify it. But first, you got to listen to it. Most of the people who say, oh, he a Christian rap. Oh, he a gospel rap, my man. Oh, he a, he a gospel rap. Is he a da 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 most of them haven't listened to the music. They just do a quick Google search, you know? And even that, the people in Google uh, or whoever might put, oh, he's a Christian rapper, it's like, that ain't even people that have listened to the music. That's people that's like, man, this man be talking about God a lot, you know what I mean? That mean he a, yeah, he a Christian rapper. I heard him say Jesus in the song. That mean he a Christian rapper. I feel you all the way because a lot of people, because I speak on God's word all the time, they always say, man, you're, you're a preacher. preacher, you're a pastor. and But I'm not, I'm, I, I don't drink, smoke, or do none of that, but still, it don't make me a pastor. I just teach the word. I like to tell people about God. I, why you got to put it in a box? That you, no, no, no. Let's so answer that. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. We got to keep this going for a couple <laughs> minutes. Hold on. You just asked the realest question. Why you got to put it into a box? I think the reason why they got to put it into a box is because once they box it in, they could put a top on their box. And and th- those that's like kind of intimidated by what you're doing and they, and they don't want to feel convicted because they don't, not everybody can have that street edge and have the ability to talk to Birdman one day but then be preaching the word the next second. And so some people, they want to try to box it in so that they could go it on and just push it to the side and try to ignore it. That's the thing with me. It's real. You not going to ignore D1 because I'm going to be in the church on Sunday out here in Dallas preaching and performing for the youth at a big old church in Dallas. I'm going to be talking on FaceTime with Kodak Black two days before that. I'm going to be at Boss Talk doing an interview here. I'm going to be with GDP when I go back to the city. You heard me? I'm going to be in Atlanta talking about relationships on a podcast that I'm going to be at Harvard teaching. I'm going to be at Tufts University teaching. I'm going to be doing all that. I'm going to be going viral when my album drop and and, and on, on Instagram lit. And yeah, I'm all that. You, you can't, can't box me in. That's the thing. Box they want to box people like us in, bro. They want to box us in, bro. That's hard. It ain't going to happen. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, listen, man. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to Boss Talk 101, man. Go follow that boy D1 with the hardest music in in the South. You know, I'm going to say the South, mm. man. It goes up like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Check it, man. Mm. <laughs> it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.